I want to build 2D platformers, but I have enough software development experience to know that striking off to build a full game is not a recipe for short failure, like in Mario, but a recipe for long-term slow failure, which is even worse. So where do we start? A small tech demo seems like as good a place as any. So I'll start off with a sandbox I can build up a character controller inside of. This will help me make sure that actually playing the game feels fun before investing too much time in building out tons of content. I'm gonna use a few different games as core inspiration here. Mario, Celeste, Hollow Knight, and Have a Nice Death. Fundamentally, these are all 2D tile-based platformers. So let's start with picking some placeholder 2D asset sprites. Most of the sprites I'm gonna use for the sandbox are going to start out as assets from Kenny's collection, available on itch.io. Later, when we've built out controls that are fun to play, we'll be able to invest time in making our own sprites. With some placeholder tile sets, we can head over to LDTK, a 2D level editor, and randomly drop some tiles onto a level. I'm going for roughly an enclosed rectangle here with some platforms in it. We can expand later. The point now is to get anything working through the full pipeline. LDTK is awesome because it writes out a JSON file that contains information about where we've placed all of the tiles. We can then ingest this JSON file into our game engine of choice, render the level, and attach behavior like collision detection. In this case, our game engine of choice is Bevy. I chose Bevy because I want to write Rust, and I have some previous experience finishing games with the engine, not just starting them. Starting off our code base, I pulled in Bevy Asset Loader, which is honestly a staple in any Bevy project I start. We'll need it here to load the tile sprites for our level map, as well as the player sprites, LDTK file, and any other assets. Bevy Asset Loader allows us to set a loading state, wait for Bevy to load our assets, and then transition into a different Bevy state with all of our assets already loaded. I definitely copied this code from the readme for Bevy Asset Loader and modified it because that's what professional programmers do when the documentation is good. Bevy has some deficiencies in its current approach to scheduling systems, and there's already a popular RFC called StageList to address this. A third-party crate that largely implements the proposed changes is called IES Loopless. We'll add this crate because we'll need it later. Then the major crate we'll need to load in our level map, Bevy ECS Tile Map. Bevy uses the ECS approach for everything. That's Entity Component System. And Bevy ECS Tile Map lets us treat every individual tile in our game as an entity. This lets us take really powerful actions like animating specific tiles or adding damage to them like in Minecraft. Bevy ECS Tile Map has an example of loading LDTK maps in its examples folder in the GitHub repo. Many Rust crates often have an examples folder because this is supported natively by the Cargo Package Manager, so it's a good idea to check for this if you're using a new crate. We can copy that example code into our project to get a head start. The copied code requires Serde and Serde JSON to load the LDTK JSON level file, which is a super common set of crates to use for this in Rust, so we add those as dependencies. Then we update our assets to point to the zombie tile sheet for the player and the sandbox level for the map. We also need to enable the 2D feature of Bevy Asset Loader to be able to load in sprite sheets as texture atlases, which will allow us to pick different indexes in the zombie sprite sheet to display when walking or jumping. We do need to count the number of rows and columns in our zombie sprite sheet and let Bevy Asset Loader know about them manually so it can slice up the image into individual sprites. And oh no, <laughs> this is when I realized my LDTK version was out of date and it had generated an older version of the LDTK JSON file. So let's go update and resave out the level. We still need to actually spawn the loaded map in, so we can create a setup system to spawn in a new camera and the map itself. And ta-da, we get uh, a map in an odd place that is definitely way too big. It only looks like a twig here, but I promise this is actually the entire map. The twig is actually an indication that we aren't showing the right tiles for the indexes that we've chosen. And I've already fixed this issue in past projects, so I update the index code and we get a platform. After a few more bug fixes and zooming the camera out so we can see the whole level map. Now, long story short is that this is when I found Bevy ECS LDTK, which is a crate that already exists to do what I'm trying to do. Combine Bevy ECS tile map, LDTK, and Rapier, a 2D physics library. I saw that the Bevy ECS LDTK repo had an issue to implement ground detection in their examples folder. So I took a short detour to implement ground detection in the Bevy ECS LDTK platformer example. I'll go over implementing that in a different video, so subscribe down below if you want to see that when it comes out, and I'll put a link in the description. I put up a PR to get that code submitted to the project and then spent a week changing it up with the maintainer to make it better and mergeable. 
Open source can be pretty cool sometimes. Then I copied the code that I wrote for the ground detection, as well as some other systems to make use of the new Bevy ECS LDDK library, and ended up with a working 2D platformer sandbox. I then went back into LDDK to draw all of my collision boxes on an int grid. An ink grid is a layer that lets you place numbers on the same grid as your tiles, which you can then use in your game engine of choice to do things like add collision. And then I updated the level to be a bit more playable. And hey, it's still just a sandbox, so there's not going to be much here. Bevy ECS LDTK and the underlying library take care of a lot of the heavy lifting that I was trying to do manually before. So with all that working, I started implementing some different sprite logic to show walking, jumping, and changing direction in the sprite animations. I tied all this together with some gamepad code that was copied and modified from the Bevy cheat book. This was used to control the character, and I was using a controller to jump around the map in no time. All in all, this was a pretty successful day of getting a sandbox up and running. Bevy and Rust make working with these systems really fun, and I'm now in a position to start building up the real mechanics that will drive what the character feels like to play. Maybe next up is the classic 2D platformer jump.